music and a special appearance by George Washington. There will also be a Father's Day vintage baseball game, Flemington National versus Liberty BBC from 12 p.m. to 4 p.m. The event is free and open to, excuse me, the free event is open to media and the public. Finally, we're looking forward to welcoming the public to East Jersey Old Town Village for the 4th of July revolutionary celebrations on July 4th between 11 and 5 p.m. for the first time in person post-pandemic. For the Office of Career Opportunity, the Office of Career Opportunity will be hosting a virtual workshop for the public on Thursday, July 21st at noon featuring Rhonda Shear, a renowned author, an international keynote speaker, a LinkedIn strategist, and business networking expert who will provide information on how to effectively use LinkedIn to connect with strategic calendar filled with appointments and prospects for business. To register, please call 732-745-3450. Keep up to date on the latest employment recruitments and hiring opportunities by texting workforce to 732-978-9211. You will receive regular updates about the Office of Career Opportunity and the programs they offer. And I, like Commissioner Collins, would like to wish my colleagues on the board a happy Father's Day. Our community, my father and my husband, are hoping to enjoy the Father's Day. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Director Shanty now. Thank you, Director. Um, from the offices of Environmental Solid Waste and Recycling Division, we have several upcoming events. Uh, on Saturday, June 25th, the division will hold a paper shred event. This program will be at South Rivers Public Works, uh, located at uh, 9 Ivan Way in the borough. On Friday, July 8th, there will be another paper shred event that will be held in New Brunswick at the high school's parking lot, located at 1000 Somerset Street, uh, Route 27 in the city. And the following Saturday, that Saturday, July 9th, um, there's another paper shred event that will be that will be conducted at Edison's Papadini Park, located at 100 Municipal Boulevard in the township. All of our paper shred events are held between the hours of 9 to noon or until the trucks are full. Residents may bring free of charge all paper items for safe shredding and recycling, thus protecting a person's personal information and identity. We ask that people only include paper items as metals and the like can be that can disable the shredding devices. On Sunday, June 26th, the division will conduct a household hazardous waste event at Overages Public Works Building, located at 1 Overage Plaza from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Residents may bring, again free of charge, household hazardous materials such as paints, insecticides, motor oil, car batteries, propane tanks, and the like for safe disposal and recycling, thus preserving a greener Middlesex County. For additional information, you may call on any of these programs. Um, you may visit the county's website or call our divisions at 732-745-4170. As we are in the height of the summer season and many will be traveling and vacationing, we encourage all of you to take your time and respect all other travelers to ensure that everyone um, arrives to their destination safely. And uh, an additional point, uh, Commissioner, uh, mentioned Juneteenth celebrations that the county is sponsoring, but I wanted to make sure to let everybody know that there are many individual municipalities that are also holding Juneteenth celebrations uh, in New Brunswick, in Piscataway, um, and Edison. They are all holding events as well as Woodbridge on Saturday, and I would recommend that our county residents check the websites for the various towns um, to participate and go. I think they're going to be really incredible um, uh, opportunities for you to have some fun with your families and uh, and see all your neighbors. So I would encourage everyone to attend. And um, you know, um, I brought my father, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to celebrate with friends and family for the other men in my life who are fathers uh, this Sunday. And I hope everyone has a, a wonderful Father's Day. <coughs> Thank you. 
free winning pitch to lead to the three games boost. It was a beautiful day to celebrate the Millsets County. Blazing the Park, opening night, there's something rocking at Blazing the Park is next Wednesday, June 22nd. Bring the long chair and join us through Saturday, July 2nd for the return of the Broadway Caliber Theater Experience. All summer performances begin at 8 p.m. and the Fox office, office opens at 5 p.m. <coughs> each night. More information and dates for the next show, SpongeBob the Musical and the Chorus Line, can be found on our website. I would also like to remind everyone that Millset County Board of Commissioners is proud to offer complimentary admission to place in the park for active U.S. military service members and their families. Complimentary tickets are also available to veterans and their families on Mondays and Tuesdays for performances of each show. Thank you all for your service. Music in the Park, our incredible Music in the Park free summer concert series begins Wednesday, July 6th. Join us at the Reverend Bay Waterfront Park in South Amboy, Saraville, Joseph Edwards Park in Park Red, Green Lake Park in South Plainville, and Thompson Park in Monroe, Chamber. Spend your summer evenings with us listening to all types of music, including jazz, big bands, classic, polka, tributes to Bill Joe and Johnny Cliff, Cash and more. Check out our full concert schedule on our website can't wait to see you there, and thank you, Director. Thank you. I would just like to uh, reiterate what my colleague said. Celebrate Middle Six on Saturday. It was a terrific event, beautiful weather, and I want to thank everyone that was involved in putting that together. It wasn't an easy task, and it was like a well-oiled machine where everything came together. And uh, I encourage everyone, again, to go to see plays in the park. It's, as Commissioner Tamaro said, it's like Broadway caliber performances that we get here, year in and year out. And I, I, I would like to wish all the fathers out there a happy Father's Day. Okay, Mr. Kelso, any resolution to be added? There are none. Any resolution to be amended? There are none. Any resolution to be held? There are none. Any resolution to be supported? There are none. This time I open up the meeting to the public. I'm only on the resolutions list.
were seen at Johnson Park. Don't repeat. Kind of concept plane, tell us about it. Just for consultation. It's just for the design work that would have to go on and become more concrete. The facilities would be needed there to house the Okay, thank you. So it's going to be a, a much higher. and staff as are currently at Johnson Park? No, not the building. Not the building, okay. But it'll be under the Parks and Recreation umbrella? Again, that's all work to be determined. Okay. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Please state your name and address and you have five minutes. Beer, beer, beer everywhere. If you do have a heart, please, and you, you 
you have a heart, please, why don't you tell your buddy, Mayor Cahill, to tell the police department to start doing their doggone jobs, stop sitting on their rear end, and get out here and clean up this brother, because wow, it's crime everywhere, but is it crime in the same location every day? Please, I want all of you to look at the police, police report, if I, or if I have to bring it down here and put it on display. Seven days in a row, someone gets stabbed over there at the criminal center? You have, Daniel, you gotta stick to the actual recommendation. Well, well, due to where it's based, like I said, if you read the story, you will see that it's all based on. Danielle, you can't just make speeches about a subject. It's got to be relevant to a resolution. Well, I guess I just have to bring you the evidence from the police department to show you what I'm saying. Like to stick to the, the topic of discussion, and that's on the resolution about alcohol and drug awareness that is being provided by this grant. Now, Ms. Bellamy just explained that to you clearly, and I think that's fair enough that the answer she gave you is, is in line with what and, and I, 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 okay, I understand, but I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna prove to you why I said what I said due to you. You keep saying stick to the subject. I'm gonna bring the police report down here and you will see that what, majority of the police reports, wow, this person was fighting over and narcotics. Then, 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 no, you should be for this particular resolution and so can we move on? If you have another resolution. Time's up. Thank you. But like I said, thank Your you. Your time is up, Danielle. I was Anyone only, else? please, I was only saying thank you to her. Are you really ready Anyone to get another else? fight in your rear end? Because I think Anyone it else is. Anyone else in the public? Is there a motion to propose? I was only saying thank you. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, Mr. Kelso. Do we have any uh, commissioners that have to vote on any resolution separately?
was pacing back and forth. She was going up and down, back and forth, up and down. You can see the hollowness in her. You can see her udders getting bigger. Um, and she was getting more vocal. And I told all this to the park worker there, and they asked him if he knew that she was in labor. And he said when she was transferred from Johnson Park, they told them she's not pregnant. Less than 12 hours later, she had babies. The sound is not up on the video, but you can hear her getting more vocal. So I told all this to the park worker, yet nobody knew she was pregnant. I just wanted to share that. I'm sorry. I just wanted to share because I know you probably weren't there, so I wanted to show you how she looked like before she had her babies. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Debbie on Morse, Street. I will say the same thing I said at City Council, and I will say, and I forget the young lady's name, at the last meeting we had, and I will say it again, it's time for you to go. President brought a real to, to where, like I said, sometimes with your temper, to, to where, wow, I was only saying thank you to the young, to, to, to the lady for her, what she said. And like I said, your temper is going to cause you to get another bite in your rear end. Please, I thought you would have learned your lesson by now. But like I said, it's time for you to go. This is what the time for your buddy may have KO to go. Because you don't, if, uh, you, I really what I want to say to you, you're not a person who concerns. The young lady last meeting, wow, it wasn't about whether the person went over time limit. She was a person to listen to the people, get all answers. It's time for you to go. And like that opportunity on election day when I run again. Well, believe me, I will make sure I spread the word. If somebody's running against you, that's the only reason why you keep winning. Same thing with Mayor Kale. If nobody's running, then okay, you will win. But like I said, one way or another, you'll get your bite. Like I said, I surely don't like your attitude the first time you did it to me and you got your bite. I thought you would have learned your lesson. But I will get to, uh, as far as, like I said, getting back to French and Handy Street. Wow, three people murdered in not even a month's time. Ten different incidents over there where you plan to go to school out of a person due to where I am, where I told you, I, I proven to you special vision. I told you that is not no area for school. What? God bless, like I said, Mr. Uh, Ron Sanders, due to where what, we're putting the traffic light on the corner of Jersey Avenue and hell. Another traffic light, thank you for on the corner of French and uh, Byers. But like I said, until you get the right people to do their doggone jobs to make it safe for an area, please, I, I tell you, like I said, you have too many people drinking drugs around here and they should not be around children. And like I said, due to where, wow. Like I told them, does it take you to be a victim to understand what it is when somebody attacks you that is drunk or drugs use due to her all through here in school? Like I said, that neighborhood is surrounded by, what, six bars. And with the help of the city council turning it into a double bar and a liquor store? Please, if you go to the monument or I'll bring the picture down here, you'll see how many cases of beer over there. Why do the police even allow people? You're not allowed to drink in public. Why do they do it? And I, then I would jump to Johnson Park as well, well due to her feet, where you lied, and like I said, you, you make excuses to say that those workers were taking care of the animals, the videos and the pictures that I'm seeing with these people now showing the animals love, they're much more better. But like I said, are your employee employees doing the right thing? No, they're not. And like I said, to see due to her 
what? With a baby ghost dying and then another pig dying under your staff care care? Not right. Like I said, please, if you are if you were a true person of concern, it shouldn't have took you this long to respond when I told you, like I said, a person had proved my point when I told you that river's gonna continue to flood. It was what it flooded the other day, a few days ago, uh -oh, all in the water over there again. Due to what I put it up on Facebook, but like I told you, due to the land is rising, you're not gonna build anything over there in Johnson Park until what? That river gets dredged. It's gonna continue to flood worse, but like I said, please. I I I, I like I said, I, I, I pray, pray, but really pray for you, really, that you really start listening and stop yelling at people due to what like I said. I was only telling her thank, thank you, and that's what really makes me upset with, with, with you a lot, this where you do have a temper on you. I just, I, you don't like the answer I give you. Look, no, for me, no, just to no, say no, thank no, you to no, her, no, oh, no, your time no, is no, up for you, and I, all I was doing was walking away saying thank you. What was I doing wrong for you to even comment? I was leaving, and I said thank you. But like I said, do to her, please. I, I'm, I'm going to bring the evidence down here how many incidents happened on that corner with French and Handy Street. I want you to really feel what all of you voted on, not just the Board of Education. That is not an area for a school. And like I said, I, I, I'm very angry with all of you, the city council, due to a while. It's not your kids, it's not your grandkids, even though it's not my kids that go away, but I treat, treat any kid. Just like I did just a while ago. Thank Please, you. think up. what you did. Please state your name and address and you have five minutes. Yes, sir. <coughs> the form open for comments at large? Please speak a little louder, sir. Is the form open for comments at large? Yes. Thank you. My name is John Milner. I live in Old Bridge. And I'm here. Um, you can move that microphone up if you'd like. I'm here because I uh, in, in covered a large payroll crime within Old Bridge. I, I directed a letter to Director Rios two weeks ago about this and the one today. I'm um, hoping that he might be able to comment a little about this and uh, get, we can get public support and an announcement of what's going on. Uh, in Old Bridge, we have 104 officers, most of which stay at home all the time. It's been going on for decades. And they're making $175,000 to $225,000 a year. And, uh, we have no uh, mayoral supervision. It's at the camp. It's, uh, <coughs> sorry. It's uh, occurring in other developments as well. And I was hoping that um, we can have some um, help from the county on this one. The only thing I can tell you is in, in, in the letter I, I forwarded it to the county prosecutor's office. And Thank that's you. all I could do. I mean, we can't get involved in an investigation. And, and, and she's a constitutional officer. By the governor. Yeah, I, I even went there today after I brought the letter to you, I and mean, the place completely closed down because of the COVID problem. Uh, this wasn't the case before she became uh, prosecutor. So uh, it's a very big problem, and I think that um, I'm putting myself in, in jeopardy at board and um, uh, penalized by the board. I find $17,000 for bringing this part employee, and um, I think it's uh, time for other people to. Sorry. I brought this to the um, court uh, two years ago. I mean, the case was dismissed as frivolous, despite having 11 years of salaries for all the officers in the police department. And knowing uh, that it was a fire at home, that's your schedule for the county officers' work in our own too. And I was, the case was dismissed as frivolous. I was fined $17,000, and it was dismissed without prejudice. I'm not allowed to bring the case back to the court. And it's time for newspapers and for our public officials to get involved. And I really would appreciate your help on this. Well, thank you for your comments, but like I said, there's nothing that we as a board can do other than forward your complaint to the county prosecutor. Uh, she was judge at the time. Yeah, I understand. And um, the governor immediately transferred her and made her a county prosecutor. So if you're not from Old Bridge, if you're from some other town, you can do public record and requests and find out the same thing that I'm finding out. That everybody's at home, we have no supervision from our mayors, and they're just raising their money. And that's why we're not 
heavy crime to prove it. Uh, you have the other listener, uh, she'll understand what's going on now. Uh, everybody's at home, everybody's uh, text on the rise. Please state your name and address, and you have five minutes. Speak loud, please. I always do. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Shannon Radler from Somerset, New Jersey. I'm going to read, and I will read fast and loud. <laughs> I was really hoping we didn't have to come back here. I actually believe we, could, we made great progress, and the worst was behind us. To say I'm stunned at the recent deaths at the park is an understatement. Last week, we had a full-term pregnant goat where you can physically see her babies move inside her while the worker stated she is not pregnant, only for her to give birth that night. If it wasn't for Anna, once again, doing the employee's job and spraying it into action, we would have more than one dead baby goat this time, too. Maybe you need to put Anna on your payroll. Why is it acceptable to the county for charitable organizations to constantly have to jump into action and raise thousands of dollars each time to try and save the animals that the county pledged to care for simply because the animals are repeatedly neglected and in such bad shape? Why are we, as private citizens, constantly donating our own money to these sanctuaries to try and help relieve the financial burden they endure caring for these animals that the county has failed. Nobody blinks an eye at the hundreds of thousands of dollars thrown at engineers and zoo advisors, yet these sanctuaries are so overburdened with medical bills for the Johnson's Park animals. Now I'd like to talk about Barkley, the last of the five obese pigs from Johnson's Park. As we know, Ernie and Samuel went to Uncle Neil's home in December and are doing wonderful. Spider and Barkley were left at Johnson's Park. Spider sadly and tragically died on January 14th of unknown causes. This now leaves poor obese Barkley all alone. You can clearly see the sadness in his existence, not to mention the struggles he endured just trying to walk due to his obesity. I have videos of him at Merrill showing his fat and inflamed red raw skin from rubbing whenever he tried to walk. On May 6th, Nick Huss left a voicemail for Rick that he had a sanctuary lined up to take Barkley and to please reach out to them. He never did. Ray from Fuzzy Butt Sanctuary's attempts to reach Rick went unanswered as well. I personally emailed Rick on Friday, May 27th, right before Memorial Day weekend regarding Barkley. Rick responded to me on Wednesday, June 1st, first that he received mine and Fluffy Butt's emails and responded to Fluffy Butt the next day. Things now seem to finally be moving along for Barkley. Last Thursday, June 9th, zoo advisors did a site visit at Fluffy Butt Sanctuary and they were preparing for his arrival. Two days ago, we found out that Barkley passed away over Memorial Day weekend. Apparently, Barkley was dead while Rick and others were making arrangements for Barkley's safe placement where all his needs would be addressed. Is there no communication or accountability with employees? I can't help but think if our attempts were answered right away, Barkley might be alive and well right now. It was stated Barkley passed away in his sleep at approximately 16 years old over the Memorial Day weekend. Cause of death is age related. He was seen during a well visit in March with no critical health issues reported by our vets. It was clear to me when I saw Barkley back in April and every time after that he had critical health issues, just as Sam on Ernie did before Uncle Neil's home intervened, and just as Spider did and died in January. There's no way Barkley showed no symptoms of health issues any more so than the pregnant mama goat who was not pregnant the night she gave birth. It's clearly more cases of complete incompetence and more animals suffering and dying with no medical intervention. This is not a training issue. This is not acceptable for animals to continue to suffer and die simply because your employees are not competent. Can you tell, please tell me how and when you were informed of Barkley's passing, why was the sanctuary being pursued after he died, and as I've asked before, what the normal protocol is for the employees when an animal cigarette dies and what accountability of any there is. Let me say this. We're not happy with the, the incidents that happened that you mentioned. We're not. I 
don't think you are. And you said that these animals passed away. And I would think you are. I'm sorry. I would think you are. And, and, and I'm being truthful with you. Mm -hmm. We need to up our game. Mm -hmm. And we plan on doing that. We plan on doing it. You may not want to hear it, but we plan on doing it with, with, with recommendations from zoo advisors as far as training for our employees moving forward. That's going to start in July. Okay, and in the meantime, we're waiting for a report back from zoo advisors on where we're moving forward with the other parks as well. Okay. And in the meantime, as far as Barkley, from what I'm told, that as you mentioned, that he died of old age. That's what we're told that he died of old age. He was 16 years old. Was it a proxy uh, gun? Time's up. Was it a proxy gun? I'm just curious. Time's up. No. No. Okay. If your time is up, then I'm going to just answer the questions that you I have appreciate that. Right, to the best of my ability of what I'm told. Mm -hmm. But again, we we realize that we need to up our game and, and do better. And we, we want to go there. We want to get in that direction. Okay. I'm doing that. All right, just to reiterate my your, question, your, your I asked a question, you said you would answer it, okay? I just want to know when you were informed that Barkley died because the time frame does not add up. And I think it's fair to ask that. Barkley okay. died. I, I have to be consistent with everybody else. We're going to answer your question. John. Yeah, so as you know, we met a couple days ago. Yes. And that was my first awareness that Barkley had died. Uh, I am now pursuing clarity based on what you said this evening. Mm -hmm.
The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So on Friday, June 3rd, 2022, Anna, Anna, as she said, noticed Autumn exhibiting signs of labor, which you all just saw. She tried to tell the staff at Merrill, but they stated it wasn't possible because she wasn't pregnant. Anna urgently reached out to several county officials for help, but before she could even receive a reply, she observed Autumn giving birth. Three new babies were born that night. Autumn was bleeding. Two of the babies were very underweight. The family of four was in need of immediate veterinary intervention. The next morning, the head animal keeper from Johnson Park showed up shortly after and transported Autumn and her brand new babies to Johnson Park. Then, just like in August of 2021, there was no vet brought to the premise. No vet came to see these hours old babies and new mother. Staff at Johnson Park, we were told, met virtually with a vet who was out of state. If your child was sick and you wanted to bring them to an emergency room to receive immediate care, would you settle for a Zoom call? with a doctor who was unable to physically assess or touch your child. No, I, I wouldn't. We've been here before, animals have died before, and now it's happened again. While this was all going on, a local sanctuary stepped up and made arrangements to take the family of four on an emergency basis into their animal hospital, where they would receive 24-7 supervision and vet care. Sadly, it was too late for Oakley, one of the two babies who was underweight. He passed away less than three days later after the sanctuary spent three days trying to save his life. The other two babies survived after receiving care, as did Mama Autumn. But I can't help but think what would have happened if Autumn was transferred to the sanctuary while pregnant. If anyone knew or noticed she was pregnant, if she gave birth there and had the proper care available. Uh, and what if Anna had not been at the park for several days in a row, indicating that the pregnant mother was about to give birth? What if she did not push for this family to receive care? Oakley was unable to survive despite receiving care, so I can only think of how the other two would have fared. This county has proven, time and time again, that they are unable to properly care for these animals, which is why people like myself and others are very concerned about the husbandry program. Why are we making plans? Thank you. Please state your name and address, and you have five minutes. Good evening. My name is Lisa Tarzia. I reside in Montgomery, New Jersey. I was born and raised in uh, Woodbridge, lived most of my life in Middlesex County. So um, I am familiar with this park. I've been here before. I'm an animal rights advocate, and um, I'm a liaison for many um, organizations in the state of New Jersey, fine organizations that advocate. Um, the majority of um, advocates are volunteers. We're not paid for the work that we do, such as with the, um, the rescues and sanctuaries that have been stepping up and um, adopting, um, taking the animals under their care. I don't think it's anyone's um, wish on this commission or at the zoo to see these animals suffer. Uh, I think it's admirable that um, you've hired a zoo advisor. I know it's a very costly undertaking. Um, I don't understand why that was needed if the um, present staffing were um, adequate. It's obvious that there is some sort of problem um, taking place because animals are dying. And when they are uh, relinquished to the various sanctuaries and rescues that are stepping up under their own cost and under their supervision of volunteers, they're, they're thriving. So I think it's very important for the county to recognize that the current program is not working. And clearly you've done that because you're trying to make changes now you're saying you've undertaken um, or going to undertake a training program for staff. I would like to see, I think a lot of people would like to see an evaluation, uh, an impossible investigation as to why there's a discrepancy um, with lost records, um, vet, uh, no care from a vet, um, why, is, why are these things happening? Why did they happen? Facilities in the state of New Jersey have to follow Title IV and Chapter 8 regulations. 
And where there have been issues and instances of animal abuse, whether intentional or non-intentional, these are usually investigated by Helios, which are humane law enforcement officers, animal control officers, oftentimes ocean, um, uh, county um, prosecutors step in and they evaluate um, possible cases and instances of abuse or mistreatment, again, whether intentional or non-intentional. And um, I, I think that uh, that should be evaluated. Animals cannot continue to die without anyone being held accountable. Um, the second thing that I'd like to bring up is that um, about two months ago, when I asked if there would be an emergency evacuation plan created for the two remaining parks, Merrill and Thompson, um, and for the, uh, the new facility that is planned, the, uh, the, old, the Old Town Village, and I was told that one was being worked on and that um, you had a practice run with Rutgers uh, to uh, remove some of the horses and then they were returned, which, which was admirable that you did that. And I was told that within several weeks a, um, an evacuation plan would be, would be created. So I was wondering if, what is the status of that? Okay, is that something that's open to public review? Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Just provide your email or phone number to the clerk. Okay, thank you. Anyone else in the public? Please state your name and address and you have five minutes. Nicholas House, Somerset, New Jersey. Dear Commissioners, it's been two months since I have come to one of these meetings. I assumed everything would be taken care of when it comes to the park employees receiving training on how to properly care for the animals. I assumed Barkley the pig would have been transferred to a permanent home by now. I assumed that you would know that it's common sense not to have a fireworks show right next to a farm animals. What is going on here, people? I'm out of the picture for two months, and this is the shenanigans you pull. Why is the county in the business of breeding animals when their employees aren't even aware that their own goat is pregnant? Why aren't these workers trained to actually tend to any of these animals' needs? How do you let an innocent animal like Barkley die on your watch? This is the second pig that died on your watch, not to mention the other pig that went magically unaccounted for at Johnston Park. You're sitting there, going on with your life, Acting like this is business as usual when animals are being harmed at the expense of humans that are under the rule of Middlesex County. A baby goat died due to negligence. A papa or pig died due to negligence. Animals are forced to deal with unnecessary noise like fireworks and have to go through unnecessary anxiety and stress. And for what? Well, I'll tell you for what. For nothing. None of this had to happen. None of us had to be here tonight had you all stop exploiting animals for human entertainment. Even the USDA states that fireworks should remain at least three quarter of a mile away from the protected habitat. You heard that? At least three quarter of a mile away from protected habitat. This is the law that is required for professional fireworks. You all take life so light because these animals have to lose theirs in order for you to listen to what the public has to say. If you refer back to the last eight months that each individual spoke on Johnson Park, if you compile all that info together, you get a 290K assessment for free. What the people are telling you is the same thing Zoo Advisor and FMP is telling you. We could have told you that this pig was going to die. We could have told you that your employees are trained, aren't trained professionals. We could have told you that animals don't like fireworks. Why don't you just hire us? Or better yet, close Merrill and Thompson down for good. That way we don't have to keep coming back and keep pointing out how irresponsible your operation is. Stop killing animals and stop with the murderless needle. Stop with the needless murder. Do the right thing and remove yourself from this exploitative business. And I'm on here speaking on behalf of Barclay the Pig and all the animals that I can't speak today. You can silence their mouth, but you ain't never silencing mine. That's the fact. Anyone else in the public? Please state your name and address, and you have five minutes. 
My name is Nisha Menon, and I'm from Somerset, New Jersey. Um, I'm not going to be saying too much new, um, you know, anything new from what you might have heard already. The reason I'm also here is to just reiterate the fact that I also have concerns. I'm guessing the more number of people that voice their concerns, you know, the louder the voice is going to be collectively, and you know that you're going to take the issue more seriously. I just want to draw a parallel to uh, something that happened at my work last week. Um, I work for a bank and I work in their IT division and we had what's known as a production issue. Something went wrong in a system that's live, used by a lot of customers. We service a lot of commercial customers and it turned out that because of a small mistake that my team made, there were checks that were over $50 million that couldn't be sent out on time, right? Now, it was a very, very costly mistake for the bank. There were managers, many levels up higher than me, who had to apologize for what I did, who had to you know, provide explanations for what I did. Um, they had to provide restitution. Um, and for me and my team, we had to have what's known as a retrospective. We had to go through um, all the steps that we took to try and understand where did our process break down and how can we avoid this going forward. I'm saying all this because even though it was so difficult for my boss's boss and everybody above him to have to apologize to clients for no mistake of theirs, they were still kind to me and my team because they understood that mistakes happen. Now, if I can tell you this for a fact, if next week I did the same thing, maybe not me, but my team, if we did the same thing, there would be dire consequences. The truth is that if we don't learn from our mistakes, that, that is our fault, right? Whatever's happening at Johnson Park, it's not a one-time thing. This is happening over and over and over again after it's got so much public scrutiny, it still happens. And we're taking it so lightly. I'm talking about $50 million, that is just money. These are lives. Lives are more important than money. The other thing that I can say parallel to what we have at work, there are people, boots on the ground, they are responsible for everyday activities. Me and my team, we were responsible for all the lines of code that went into making that mistake. But at the end of the day, my boss and his boss, they are accountable for us, right? And that accountability means something. You are making the decisions of who to hire, whether they're capable for a job or not, if they're showing incompetency, keeping them there is your decision. If things go wrong, you are accountable for what is happening. This is not somebody else's fault anymore. This is yours. You're making the decision to have this continue. There is blood on your hands at this point in time. I agree with somebody else who said, we didn't think we had to come here again. Now, I haven't actually been to one of these commissioners meetings for a long time because I figured things are changing. You know, we came here week after week and things were different. They were moving in the right direction. And now we find it really hasn't. And we're back to square one. Oh, you know, they don't have the training. They will be given training. They'll do things better next time. So I'm just, I'm just here to voice my disappointment because if this was the first time, I understand humans make mistakes. But things not changing, that is a shame. And there is blood on your hands today because of it. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Please state your name and address, and you have five minutes. Joseph Schmidt, um, East Brunswick. Um, just you know, I have Tourette syndrome, so I have facial tics. So you're right. And I apologize for not changing before coming. I did have chance to work. So just uh, speak I, a little loud. About okay, sorry. I have two questions. Um, one of them is about East Brunswick and the DPW they used to have for recycling before the pandemic. The styrofoam, they took the they took it away because they couldn't recycle during the pandemic. Is that coming back? Are you going to be recycling it? If, it, if, you, if you could tell me if it's coming back, and if it isn't, if you could try to do something about recycling. 
That's the first question. Second question is, I don't know how much you have in control of Middlesex County College, um, but I have a friend who is, has an autoimmune disease because of the HPV vaccine, and she had first gained the coronavirus vaccine, which is still in the third stage clinical trials. It hasn't finished that yet. And I'm hearing that she can't go in person to the college to classes. And I just want to ask about, is that what is that true? Is there something that I'm not hearing about? Those are my two questions. Yeah, on, on the question for the college, give your name to the clerk here and contact, contact number, and, and we'll get back to you on that. Thank you. And as far as the, uh, the uh, styrofoam, yeah, the same thing with the styrofoam. We can get back to you on that. We have to check. With our folks, thank you very much. Thank you. Well, they said it was the, it was the county picked it up. So they told me this was a long time ago. Yeah. Okay. We'll we'll get back to you. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Please state your name and address, and you have five minutes. Brian Feldman, Bridgeton, New Jersey. On March 17th, I stood at this podium and I said to you, and I quote, We've been inquiring about the fifth missing pig from Johnson Park. We found him. He's at Merrill. And have you seen him? He's overweight. His skin is horrendous. So please, get your bed out there, and I hope that the care at Merrill is better than the care at Johnson Park. The pig who I am referring to is Barkley. And where is Barkley now? So almost three months to the day that I told you about how poor of a condition that he was in, your workers at Merrill discovered that he dropped dead. He's dead. It's rare that animals drop dead with no warning at all, and you all had a warning. We warned you. But take us out of the equation. Isn't it the job of your employees to monitor the health of the animals and make sure that they are being adequately cared for? Would you say that they did their job? Barkley was obese, and his skin was horrific. And anyone who looked at him could see that. And I would like to know what was done for him after I brought that to your attention on March 17th. What was done for him? Was he put on a diet? Was his skin cared for? Did he see a vet? Did anyone do anything at all? No. no. How about the goat that we talked about who was obviously pregnant? Anna <coughs> told an employee that she was going to give birth, and his words were, she's not pregnant, she just looks like that. That is frightening. It is so irresponsible, and it is so dangerous. And as we've learned, goats die in childbirth. It's happened at Johnson Park. Not to mention, you've told us countless times that you're doing everything in your power to prevent breeding. But here we are, another goat is pregnant, and one of her babies has died due to negligence. None of us are veterinarians. And for the sake of this conversation, I will say that I am around farm animals 24-7, but most of the public are not. The only experience they have with animals is going to your parks and seeing the animals at the parks. So do you see a problem that people who have no experience have more knowledge and bring up the medical conditions that the animals are having, but your employees do absolutely nothing at all to ensure that they even stay alive and don't drop dead? Do you see a problem with that? Commissioner Director, do you see a problem with that? Let me say this, and I don't know if you were here when I said it. We need to, we need to up our game. Mm -hmm. We need to make yeah. improvements. Yes. We recognize that. We're, we're not happy of the incidents that happened between the goat and the pig. Yes. The pig, from what I'm told, died of old age. And I'm not going to dispute that. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go back and forth with you because I'm not a veterinarian. Sure. Veterinarians, we're having issues trying to get vets to come on an as-need basis sometimes. We're going out for RF, uh, cues for uh, uh, RF peace for, for a vet, but th that may be a challenge as well, mm -hmm. but we're making every effort. I made a phone call to a family member that knows the vet to see if they would be interested in making uh, Sure. I, I understand and I appreciate your comments. I just want to keep going just because of time. Um, and I do understand you're using the acorn vet, Dr. Higgins. I will tell you that I have experience with him and other sanctuaries have experience with him and he is not reliable. So I would like you to keep that in mind. Um, and here we are opening up a husbandry program. So let's drop the spoken mirrors. It's a zoo. 
It is a place that people are going to go for entertainment to look at animals, and that is a zoo. And do you feel like you are the people to be opening up another zoo? No. We have a track record of animals languishing and suffering in your care, and then thriving in sanctuary is going to be a disaster. And if there are fireworks that go off near these animals, like Nick mentioned the law, I have hundreds of people who will report you to the USDA. The training is not going to help because your employees, they don't care. We don't have training, and we bring up all of the medical conditions to you guys. We care more than the employees. The training is not going to do anything. And shifting gears real quick with my remaining time, I sent you emails twice now offering a home to Maggie the cow. She is the one lone cow in your parks and she lives on a dirt plot alone. I have 17 cattle. I can give her a lovely, happy, fulfilled life with friends and decent medical care. I know that I'm a thorn in your side and that you don't want me to take in another animal, but please don't think of me and don't think of yourselves. Think of Maggie's happiness. I am willing to offer her a home, so please consider and I will follow up on this request this week. And just a little recap with my remaining time, the animals that I took in from Johnson Park, the two pigs and the ram, they're doing amazing. They are so happy. They smile, real smiles, Not every enough. single day. Thank you. Thank you. And in reference to the cow, if we get recommendations from zoo advisors that, that maybe we should uh, hold off on keeping the animals and then bring them back, if that's, if that's a, a recommendation by them or if they think that's appropriate, we would, we would consider that. Okay, thank you. Please state name and address, and you have five minutes. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, Charlie Cradiville, I'm the New Brunswick resident. I'm also the Central Jersey organizer for Food and Water Watch, a nonprofit environmental group with our New Jersey headquarters just a block away from here. And it's good to see you, Director. I know you missed the last meeting, and so I want to catch up on what I've been working on. I came to this microphone to warn the commissioners about the plans for a new gas power plant about six miles away from here in the Casey section of Woodbridge Township. There's already one gas power plant in this location. And a little backstory, the uh, Chris Christie administration, in conjunction with a private company called Competitive Power Ventures, foisted this first dirty power plant on KSB. Um, the administration showered the company with subsidies and allowed them to build on a radioactive, contaminated ground field along the Raritan River waterfront. Promises were made at the time that the waterfront would be transformed into a beautiful public park scheduled to open in 2016, six years ago. And the power plant got built. It opened in 2016, but the park did not. It continues to be a contaminated wasteland. While CPV's plants use millions of tons of greenhouse gases and toxic pollutants into our air each and every year. No doubt, CPV, which is now far and owned, reaps millions of dollars poisoning our air. And so I do want to thank uh, Deputy Director uh, Santi Nara for uh, meeting with some of our members who are concerned about this. Uh, we have presented her with legislation that we're asking this board to adopt that would formally oppose CPV's pending application for an air pollution permit that would allow them to operate a second dirty plant on that site. As I stated last time, I think this goes against the county's uh, Destination 2040 plans and uh, Obviously, we all can agree that the climate crisis is already causing serious problems for Middlesex County. So in light of this, I did want to just ask, what is the status of getting this common sense, pro-climate, pro-environment, pro-public health resolution on your agenda? I don't know. I'd have to, we'd have to look at it. You're right. We'd have to see what, what this is all about. And then we'll make, make a determination if, it's, if, if it should be a, a resolution or not. Director, if I may. Sure. Charlie, I know you reached out to me today and it was a bit crazy for me. And it's, I have to apologize because the, the resolution that you had given me, um, other people may not know, but there were um, a lot of footnotes to it, as mm -hmm. you recall, that uh, referenced other documents, studies, other things. And so I had said to you I was going to take a look at it because we 
also had to look at the underlying references and footnotes, etc. Um, we're working on that. I did not get a chance to get that completed and get the information out to the other commissioners, but that will happen in a couple days, and they'll get all the information. They'll be able to uh, read through um, pretty much what you, you had all presented to me, and, and then we'll go on from there. So my apologies if the delay from when we met last week till today was really my fault. Well, uh, apology accepted, and I understand you've got a lot, um, to, a lot to, to do as, as county commissioners, and I, I do want to, um, you know, once again, say thank you for hearing us out. And, uh, yeah, I want to make myself available to answer any questions you may have. Like we said in the meeting, we want you to do your research uh, on this because we think that if you do the research, you'll come to the same conclusion that we have, that this is a ban for Middlesex County, and that it would be wise and meaningful for this board to pass a resolution opposing the, the air permits. And so, um, yeah, the offer's on the table to any of the commissioners who would like to meet or, or have a phone call uh, or, or get more information. I'm happy to share the resolution with everyone. Um, happened to be since you were absent that, that uh, uh, the deputy director stepped up and, and took the meeting, and, and we really do appreciate it. And, and I'll just, uh, uh, close by giving you this fact sheet, and I'll invite anyone here who wants one. I, I will have these, and uh, also have a, a sign-up sheet for anyone who wants to stay in the loop to get more information about this. And uh, I also have some flyers for the uh, um, uh, rally and march for clean air and climate justice in Trenton. Uh, one week from today, where we'll be joining with other frontline communities opposing fossil fuel infrastructure to protect our air and our climate. Thank you. Thank you. Please state your name and address if you have five minutes. Sure. Uh, Taylor Myers, I'm in Highland Park. Um, I know that this is a tough week for, for you to hear all of us because a lot of animals have have died and we've heard a lot of bad news this week. Um, but I'm hoping to offer some routes of change for you guys. So um, last week a young man asked about a hog at Thompson Park who was in the same condition as Barkley was um, and whether or not that, that hog could be released to the sanctuaries who are lined up to take these animals. Um, have any arrangements been made for that hog, the Thompson Park? Um, again, he's in the same condition as Barkley was when Ryan talked about Barkley the first time. So and he's at Thompson. Yeah, yeah. So this is something that you could actively do. This is another situation that you could stop now. Um, the uh, idea that we plan to up our game is a nice gesture. I fear <laughs> that it's a little late because we've been telling you this stuff for months. Right? We came first in September um, to talk to you guys about the conditions at Johnson Park Zoo. Now we are realizing at Marilyn Thompson they are not different. Um, I'm wondering when the plan to up our game is going to be implemented? What, what, when, what concrete measures are you taking? Well, we're awaiting the report from uh, the zoo advisors, and based upon their recommendations, that's that's the route that we plan on taking. You know, obviously, you know, we're here today because we have residents that want animals to visit, and that's why we're at the the uh, heritage. Uh, we're going to be at the uh, East Town Village. At what cost, though? At like, it, I mean, is it worth it to like torture these animals to keep them alive to for, so people can come and look at them? Our intent is not to. out of, of the intent, which is to entertain people, yeah, but we are torturing animals in there. And to use it as an educational tool. I mean, even still, I, I, I don't know if it's worth the amount of, of pain that is going on in these animals, in these animal units. I really don't. Um, I just wanted to offer one other uh, route that you could take. Um, I understand that you're having a hard time getting emergency vets. 
uh, into the system. If you are planning on this Heritage Village Husbandry Program, whatever you're going to call it, um, have a vet on staff. That would maybe solve a lot of this, these issues, wherein you could just have somebody there uh, on call um, or in actually a nine to five position uh, in Middlesex County that is the Middlesex County vet and would be there for these animals. Um, that seems like a pretty obvious uh, <coughs> Res resolution that no one has uh, talked about yet. Um, in addition, I think that you guys could go even further. I think that we could make Middlesex County the safest place for animals to live. Um, I think that we could maybe put in increasingly uh, safe laws. Uh, maybe no animals can be housed in a floodplain. Uh, maybe that there has to be a vet uh, for the animals um, ready to go. Uh, there are some things that we could do to make this better. Um, I know that uh, you do have the best intentions in mind, but that's not really coming across right now. So uh, I do hope that you uh, take these considerations in, into consideration. Okay. <laughs>